Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various plants that are in flower in late July and August in my wildlife pond. The plant that we haven't looked at yet is the lesser spearwort. That's this one here with the yellow flowers. It's a British native plant and it flowers from May through to August. So I like the lesser spearwort because it isn't very invasive, it's got a nice flower and it grows in the margins. Whereas here we have the greater spearwort. It is very invasive, so I actually pull this greater spearwort out. So let's just, let's just see what it's like pulling this greater spearwort out. So if I just give it a little pull here, at the roots down below here, it's actually broken, but you can see the roots there. Let's just see if I can pull the rest of it out, because it just snapped off there. No, I can't. So here we have another one here. So here's, here's a greater spearwort. Let's just see if I can gently pull him out. There we are. So that's pulled him out along with a couple of... <laughs> along with a little bit of other weed that we can replant. So let's just tease that off. And there we are. There's the greater spearwort. And so I will go round the pond and pull those out. They're just too vigorous for a pond of the size I have. We'll just lay that gently at the side of the pond for the moment in case there's some little insects that want to crawl back in the water. Another British native plant is the water plantain. So this, this is the water plantain. Has nice little white flowers. This water plantain flowers from June to August. It's actually just falling over a little bit. It's just leaning over a little bit because of the heavy rains we've had recently. This one's standing up okay. This one's quite nice. And there's a few others around the pond. A small one here. Another one will come up here. And these are the little arrow-like leaves. This is variegated, sweet-scented rush. And in ancient times, it was used as floor covering in huts. And so it was one of nature's air fresheners. Quite pretty. And it also flowers. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> And it's good for dragonfly larvae to climb up when they want to emerge. Although the dragonfly larvae prefer to come up the rushes and the flag iris here. I've got three varieties of water lily in the pond. At the moment, there's just one of the white ones out, but I also have a pink one and a butter colored one.
We can just see here there are more water lily flowers to come out. So there's a succession of them through the summer. Here are the water soldiers that I talked about in the very first pond video I did. I really like these water soldiers. They are one of the first plants to send up their leaves in the early spring. They spend the winter on the bed of the pond, you don't see them, and then during the very early spring, they start to rise up and then send their leaves out of the water. And what's really nice is the damselfly larva love to climb up and emerge from these water soldier leaves. So much so that some of the leaves have two, three or four damselfly larvae climbing up them. We have two or three varieties of damselfly in the pond, the azure damselfly and the large red damselfly. And on a warm summer day in early summer, the pond is covered in these lovely damselflies mating. And then laying eggs. And it's so nice to see them laying eggs because I know then the following year I'm going to have all these new larvae emerging and more damselflies. However, when a dragonfly is laying eggs in the pond, I know that it's going to be at least two, three, even four years before the larva crawls out of the water and emerges into a beautiful dragonfly either a hawker or, as was the case when we looked at the previous video, a darter. First one I'd seen, fabulous. Just going back to these water soldiers, they do actually flower. They have a small white flower. It's a little bit insignificant, but I do have a picture of one for you. I videoed this earlier. There isn't one out at the moment, but a few weeks ago there was, so I, uh, I videoed that for you. Let's now have a little look round the pond and see what we've got. So, here are the flag iris that flowered a few months ago. The water plantains flowering now. The lesser spearwort still in flower just about. The greater spearwort that I'm pulling out. Oh, and the flower that has is very similar to the lesser spearwort, it's, but larger. It's a larger uh, yellow flower. Then we have the marsh marigold. That was really early in the spring. I think that was in my April video. Beautiful yellow flowers. They're starting to die off now, and once they have, I'll probably leave it for a few more weeks, but then I will just cut that back to the ground. Oh, here's another greater spearwort there. I'll pull that out later. Oh, a little weed, this is the weed that's all round the garden. The one with that little purple flower not too invasive but it does appear everywhere so I'll just take that out as well and pop that there for the moment the sweet scented rush I'm not sure of the name of this particular weed but I, I like it. it it's quite prolific so I do have to pull a lot of that out in the well, late winter, early spring, otherwise it would take over the whole pond. There's another marsh marigold, a larger one. 
the small irises that were out a few months ago. This one's quite interesting, this rush. You see how there are little lumps out of it. That is the rush sawfly. And they have munched some of the leaves. More leaves have grown and they have now emerged and disappeared wherever they go. Now the water lilies. Every few years, maybe five years, I take one of the lilies out. They were planted in a cage, but they do grow out of the cage and it's very difficult to get them out now, actually. But I like to, and then I split them up, put a small portion of the rhizome back in the basket and put them back in the pond. And the reason I do that is invigorates them, reinvigorates them, and also because they're getting quite big, look how big they're getting, they are sitting high above the water. Now I don't mind a few doing that because I think it creates extra shade and habitat. But I don't want all the leaves standing up proud, I want some of them flat on the surface. Beautiful flowers the uh, water lilies produce. Then past the irises over on the far side. Oh, can you hear the sound there? That's the sound of the long-tailed tits coming in the garden. We have the yellow loose strife. And just to the right of it is the purple loose strife, both native British. Yes, that chirping, that's the long tail tits coming in. Let's just see if I can just focus on them for you. There we are, there they are. If you've enjoyed my video, please give it a like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you'll know when my new videos come out. And thanks for watching Paul T's World. Bye.